A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. I seek refuge with Allah Almighty from Satan the Rejected One. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. By the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadiyu wa alihi wa sallam. As-salamu alaykum. And welcome to our segment on Surah Al-Araf. Inshallah, today we will cover the ninth ruku of Surah Al-Araf, verses 65 to 72. The previous ruku ended with the fact that because the people of Prophet Nu alayhi salam rejected Allah's signs and were blind to them, they were drowned. Allah saved Prophet Nu alayhi salam and those who were believers with him. From the last ruku, we also learned that this matter is not just limited to the story of Prophet Nu alayhi salam, but it is the divine law. Those nations that will show the same behavior as the nation of Prophet Nu alayhi salam will have the same end. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. With this dua, let's begin the ninth ruku of Surah Al-Araf. Bismillah ar-Rahim, verse 65. Wa illa adin akhahum huda qala ya qawmi budullaha malakum min ilahin ghayru afala tattaqun. And to the Ad. Their brother Hud, he said, O oh my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. Then will you not fear him? Ad refers to the people of Ad, to whom Prophet Hud salam, was sent. After the flood of the nation of Prophet Nu, salam, the world was rebuilt. In its construction, the mindset and abilities of Prophet Nu salam, aided him, and his followers continued on with the same prophetic way of thinking and started a new world with him in light of the oneness of Allah. Until mankind guarded the concept of Tawheed, which is the oneness of Allah, and stopped themselves from doing from the wrongdoing, the world had peace and harmony, and Allah was pleased with them. But unfortunately, mankind's natural weakness and habit of forgetfulness is overcome eventually. The rebellious side of us takes over, which had been overcome by the zeal of the times of Prophet Nu salam, and Satanism started to flourish. According to the Holy Quran, the nation of Ad was the su successor of the nation of Prophet Nu salam. Allah had blessed them with health, and wellness, but unfortunately, they strayed from the path of their forefathers and abandoned monotheism and turned towards idolatry. Prophet Hud was sent to this nation. He gave them the message that every prophet gave to his people, that there is no servitude to anyone except Allah. He is the only God, the true creator and owner, and he is the one who fulfills the needs of all his creatures. And that is what needs to be the focus of our life. We must put all our hopes in Allah and expect only from Him and live according to His orders and save ourselves from all kinds of disobedience. In Surah Hud, verse 52, Prophet Hud salam's message is described in some more detail, where it says, O oh my people, ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to Him. He will send the sky upon you in showers and increase you in strength, to your strength, and do not turn away like criminals. Let's go on to verse 66. Qalal mala'ul lazina kafaru min qawmihi inna lanaraka fi safahitin wa inna la nazunnuka min al Gazibin, said the chiefs, who disbelieved among his people, Indeed, we see you in foolishness, 
And indeed, we deem you are of the liars. Safahatan means foolishness or lack of good sense or judgment. Lana zunnuka means we deem or to strongly think or judge. The chiefs who were the influential people of this nation were disbelievers and refused to accept the message of truth and accused Prophet Hud salam that what he was saying was not true in their opinion. In the Holy Quran, whenever nations have been mentioned which were destroyed by punishment, their society and way of thinking and behavior have also been described. In verses 128 to 135 of Surah Al-Shu'ara, a dialogue of Prophet Hud salam has been narrated, from which we can see a glimpse of the social life and overall thinking and behavior of the people of Ad. The verses state, Do you construct a sign on every high place amusing yourselves? And take for yourselves fortresses that you might abide eternally? And when you seize, you seize as tyrants? So fear Allah and obey me. And fear him who has provided you with which you know, provided you with grazing livestock and children, and from gardens and fountains. Indeed, I fear the punishment of a great day upon you. The rebellion of these people was due to their pride and worship of worldly luxuries. Let's move on to verses 67 and 68. Gala ya qawmi, laysa. Bi safahatun, wa lakinni rasulum mir rabbil alameen. Said, O my people, there is not foolishness in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. Uballegukum risalati rabbi wa ana lakum nasihun ameen. I convey to you the messages of my Lord. And I am to you an advisor trustworthy. Nasihun means advisor or well-wisher, someone who is sincere. Prophet Hud salam assured the leading people of his nation that he was not saying anything on his own behalf. Rather, he had been exalted by Allah to the position of a messenger, and he was conveying the message of Allah to them. To fulfill this responsibility. This is also mentioned in Surah Al Shuara, verses 125 and 126, where it says, Indeed, I am a trustworthy messenger to you, so be mindful of Allah and obey me. This is also mentioned in Surah Hud, verse 51, where it says, O my people, I do not ask for you, ask you for it any reward. My reward is only from the one who created me. Then will you not reason? Prophet Hud salam made it clear to the people that he had no personal interest or gain in conveying the message. On the contrary, his efforts were actually for the good of the people. And if those people did not leave their current way and come to the right path, then it will not end well for them. And as a sincere well-wisher, he wanted the people to turn to their true Lord, true Lord to Allah. Let's move on to verse 69. Awa ajiptum an ja'akum zikrum min rabbikum ala rajulim minkum liyunzirakum waskuru iz ja'alakum khulafa'a min badi qawmi nuhin wa zadakum fil khalki bastatan Faskuru ala Allahi la allakum tuflihun. Then, do you wonder that there has come to you a reminder from your Lord through a man from among you that he may warn you? And remember when he made you successors after the people of Noah and increased you in stature extensively. So remember the favors of Allah that you might succeed. Zada means increased. Bastadan means extensive 
or covering a large area. Ala means favors or bounties. From this verse, it is known that these people considered Prophet Hud salam as something strange or supernatural, just like the people of Prophet Nu salam did. Therefore, they were embarrassed to accept the message and the fact that a person like him got this position to convey the commands of Allah to them. Prophet Hud salam reminded the people of the special blessings of Allah, who made them the successors of the people of Prophet Nu alayhi salam. They were endowed with physical strength and health. He, he gave them knowledge of various sciences and arts from which they got success and were at a high position. Prophet Hud alayhi salam also reminded the people that if they wanted to succeed in this world and the hereafter, they have to be mindful of the resources and abilities provided to them and use them accordingly to the orders of Allah. That's how you show gratitude for Allah's blessings, also called shukr. Let's move on to verse 70. Qalu ajittana lana budallaha wahdahu wa nazara ma kana ya'budu aba'una fatina bima ta'iduna in kunta minas sadiqin. They said, Have you come to us that we should worship Allah alone and leave what our forefathers have worshipped? Then bring us what you promise us, if you should be of the truthful. It was just not acceptable to the leading and influential people of the nation to worship only one God, instead of worshipping the different gods. This is also mentioned in Surah Hud, Verse 53, where it says, They said, O oh Hud, you have not brought us clear evidence, and we are not ones to leave our gods on your command, nor are we believers in you. Similarly, this is also mentioned in Surah al shuara verses 136-138, to where the verses state, They said, It is all the same to us, whether you advise us or not of the advisors. This is not but the custom of the former peoples, and we are not to be punished. The only justification they had for not accepting the message was the blind imitation of their ancestors, what their forefathers were doing. A similar argument was presented by the people of Prophet Nu salam before, and unfortunately, even today, the same argument of customs is used as justification. The people were amused by the message presented by Prophet Hud and started asking him for a miracle so he can prove himself to them. Let's go on to verse 71. Qala kad waqa'a alaykum min rabbikum rijsun wa ghadan atujadilunani fi asma'in samaytumuha antum wa aba'ukum Ma nazalla lahu biha min sultan fantazzeru inni ma'akum min al muntazirin. He said, Already has fallen upon you from your Lord defilement and anger. Do you dispute with me concerning names you have named them, you and your forefathers, for which Allah has not sent down any authority? Then wait, indeed. I am with you among those who wait. Waqa'a means has fallen or occurred. Rijsun means defilement, state of being spoiled or marred. Asma'an means names, comes from the root seen, meme, and wal. And right next to it, we see the word sameitu which means you named. Prophet Hud salam warned the people that due to their existing behavior, their minds had been polluted. Therefore, they did not understand what he had to say. But they were adamant about worship, worshiping their own self-made gods and not Allah, who was a true creator and Lord. 
These gods, they carved with their own hands and named them themselves. Their reality was nothing, nor was there any evidence revealed to them that they were from Allah. So they were told to wait for the results of their deeds, since they were not ready to give up in their stubbornness and not change their ways. Let's go on to verse 72. فَأَنْ جَيْنَاهُ وَالَّذِينَ مَآهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا وَقَطَعْنَا دَابِرَ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِأَيَاتِنَا وَمَا كَانُوا مُؤْمِنِينَ So we saved him and those with him by mercy from us. And we cut the root of those who denied our signs and they were not believers. ذَابِرَ means root. The people did not listen to their messenger, Prophet Hud and continued on the path of rebellion. If you cut the root of a living plant, it will die. And just like that, the disbelievers were killed. Whereas Allah, by his mercy, protected Prophet Hud from the punishment along with those who believed. Reflecting on the Holy Quran, we learn that when human beings leave Allah and make some other object their focal point, such as money, material wealth, or power, then gradually their minds start to deviate from Allah and all their abilities and efforts are spent in pursuit of the world. Allah has created this world for the disposal of men, and he is pleased to see his servants making good use of the blessings he has created for them. But this only happens when man acknowledges the oneness of Allah and does not deny his lordship and lives his life in care of Allah. This concludes our segment on Ruku 9 of Surah Al-Araf. Let's briefly go over what we discussed. Wherever the downfall of nations is mentioned in the Holy Quran, the way of life, manners, and thinking of these past nations has also been described so that future generations do not try to follow in their wrong footsteps and learn from the stories of their destruction. According to the Quran, the decline of a nation always comes after its greatest rise. This indicates that when the collective consciousness of mankind reaches its peak, their mind's focal point shifts from Allah to the material world, and their pursuit of the world is what leads to their downfall. Some of the reasons for the punishment of the people of Ad are arrogance, worship of wealth, persecution and oppression, polytheism, blind imitation of the forefathers, and denial of the signs of Allah and his messengers. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amin. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadaqallahu al-Aliyyul-Ladheem. Allah speaks the truth. The exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadiyu wa alihi wa sallam.